Hello guys, Dan here, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we are going to do another video, uh, this time about the Haki Islam paint set, and we will try to paint this uh, Gulam infantry uh, following the Angel Giraldes uh, uh, guide that's provided inside. Uh, so let's see uh, what came inside. So we have a set of eight colors and a miniature and as well that will be a guide that will guide us how to paint that miniature. So let's try to get uh, the same effect as they, they did in the cover following this guide. So without further ado, grab yourself some drink, sit back, relax and enjoy this uh, quite longer video today. Step 1. Heavy brown is applied as base color all over the figure. This will be of help in working the highlights and shadows. Uh, as we can see they are airbrushed the heavy brown all over the miniature except on the boots, uh, head and the gun. Uh, but uh, I will just do it uh, everywhere. So this is just the priming step so I will just uh, skip to the complete model. So this is how it's done just with the heavy brown uh, primer. Uh, so now we can start uh, working uh, thoroughly on this model. Step 2. Luftwaffe camouflage green is applied as base color on the straps and boots. So we have these little uh, straps on the legs, knee pads, holster for the gun. A mixture of 80% flat earth and 20% black is applied as base color on the rucksack, bag and arm protectors. So this will be pretty straightforward job. So let's uh, start and try to do it. So I will start with the Luftwaffe camouflage green. Uh, I shake uh, the bottle really well and then uh, I put it on my wet palette and just add a few drops of water so I mix that color so it flows uh, better from my brush and then I start blocking the colors. Uh, I painted the holster, uh, knee pads and all the straps uh, on the model, on his rucksack, the one that are holding uh, uh, his knife. The second part uh, of this uh, step was to uh, mix a flat earth uh, with some black and then paint uh, the rucksack bag and uh, all those uh, warmer protections that this model have. Uh, so I did the same, I just uh, added this uh, color to the wet palette and uh, add uh, one drop of water to it and then I start uh, blocking the colors. Uh, this is as well pretty easy step, uh, pretty straightforward, I didn't have any doubts here, so it went uh, really well. This is how the model looks like after the second step is completed. Uh, just in the later step you will see that I painted uh, the boots uh, totally green, here I didn't, I wanted to paint them black, but I changed my mind. Step 3. A mixture of 60% black and 40% flat earth is applied with a wash all over the miniature to achieve a better definition of the pants, boots, rucksack, ATC. Uh, so actually they created a wash here and then they washed the whole miniature. So I will do the same, I will just uh, I will wash everything. So I mixed uh, both colors on the wet palette and then I keep adding water until I get uh, consistency like this I did on my finger. And then uh, I've just applied the wash all over the model. I haven't skipped any part. Actually I only skipped the face uh, because I was planning to do the face later. But everything else was uh, covered with this wash. So 
after wash is dry this is how the model look like so it was little toned down uh, but more or less uh, the colors still look the, the same just little darker step 4 to add highlights to the shoulder knee and she pads and to the body warmer the color dark sand is added little by little to the base color heavy brown as the highlights are being applied the area to be highlighted diminish uh, so what they want us to do is to actually mix these two colors and then uh, do the highlight and then add uh, more dark sand to the mix then do a highlight but highlight the less area then add a little more dark sand to the mix then highlight even less area so let's try to do that so I mixed uh, like 50-50 mix here and then I started highlighting uh, as they said like the most raised areas uh, try to cover as much as I can of them but I was leaving all the recesses still uh, in the shadows uh, so I let's say I covered like uh, around 90% uh, of these areas with this pass uh, just to give you a little side note here uh, after this color is dry it will look uh, much darker it looks really bright when I apply it, but after a few minutes when it get dried, it becomes so darker. So I went this in couple of passes just to try to achieve the level of the color they have it on the picture. So for my second pass, I added uh, more dark sands to the same mix and uh, I tried to cover less area now. Uh, now let's say I cover like 75 or 70 percent of the area I previously covered with the previous highlight and then I kept doing it I added uh, more uh, of the dark sand and I covered even less uh, until I was happy with the level of the, the tone of this color uh, I wanted it to be really bright to create a contrast like they did on that picture uh, but actually I think that picture was photoshopped or something I couldn't get the same level of contrast even after I applied the, the pure uh, dark sand it was not that bright as they uh, showed it in the picture so for my last pass uh, here I think I used the, the pure uh, dark sand and I just did the edge highlight uh, of the most uh, raised areas of these armor panels uh, and I just put little dots and little lines on the edges just to create like the, the final highlight Step 5. A little bit of flat earth is applied to define uh, these details even more. Uh, so what they want us to do here is to take the darker color, which is the flat earth, and uh, paint the recesses just to create the shadows and uh, create the contrast on this model. So this is pretty straightforward step. Uh, so I just took a flat earth. Uh, on my brush and uh, just go slowly and try not to mess up everything and whenever was there a darker area of the shadow I just uh, painted this uh, draw a little line or uh, just fill up that area with a flat uh, earth just to create a shadow Step 6 the color dark sand is applied to the pants and sleeves to create highlights on the base color heavy brown, but taking care not to overdo this application. The process is the same as the previous step, but the amount of the color dark sand is reduced. So actually what they want us to do here is to do the same highlight as we did before, but this time not to mix that much of the dark sand color. Uh, just to create a less so to create like a one tone down highlight than we did uh, on the arms uh, and the knee pads uh, so it's a lot of sand and earthy tones painting on this model so it's quite difficult uh, but let me try to achieve uh, so I need to highlight it with the one tone down 
so I mix the colors uh, to one tone less or couple of tones less than I did uh, on the previous highlights and I just went around the model and highlighted the most uh, raised area and the folds of the clothes so I was not touching recesses or any other areas Step 7. As for the shadows on the pants, a mixture of uh, flat earth and black is used and applied in the deeper areas of the creases. Uh, so actually it's the same thing they did before, it's, uh, they created a darker color and then just applied in the recesses uh, of the pants. Uh, so this is as well uh, pretty straightforward, so I just uh, mixed uh, both colors uh, just to create a darker brown uh, color and uh, I applied it uh, inside the folds of the pants uh, and the pockets and as well on the arms, uh, so inside of the recesses just to create the shadow. Step 8 the first highlights on the rucksack, bag and padded areas are applied with the flat earth. Uh, so we are going back to the flat earth, now in this case it will be the pure one. And I'm going to highlight all these areas by covering like 90% of them, uh, only leaving the, the recesses uh, and the shadows intact. Uh, so this went uh, pretty smoothly and pretty easy here uh, because uh, these uh, rucksacks are really detailed so I didn't have any problems with the covering them as well as these uh, pads that he have on his arms and uh, the legs everything went uh, super good Step 9. Sunny skin tone is added to the previous color to create the next highlight. The color is applied with the technique of dots and lines to create the worn leather effect. Black wash is applied to define further these areas. So I mix uh, sunny skin tone with the flat earth and I was just drawing like uh, some st strokes of the short lines and putting dots. Uh, as they said, uh, all around these leather areas, uh, just to try to create uh, a worn uh, leather effect. And then, as they advised, I create the black wash. So I just uh, put a little of black paint and added the water to it. Uh, so I create consistency like uh, I showed you on my finger. And I just uh, went over all these areas uh, again, just to create uh, more definition on them. Guys, uh, I hope you are enjoying this video and if you have time, uh, please drop by on the Instagram and the Facebook page where I usually put more pictures of the projects uh, that are uh, 
in the progress and as well if you have time uh, please subscribe to the channel it will mean a lot to me and it will help this uh, channel grow in the future step 10 to highlight the boots and straps a uniform green is added uh, this was pretty straightforward as well, so I took uniform green, uh, I put it on my wet palette, add uh, a drop of water to it, uh, so I got a good uh, consistency and good flow, and then I went uh, all over these green areas and I repainted 90% of them. I just uh, make sure that I left uh, the recesses intact and that I left all the shadows uh, in the previous uh, state. Dark sand is applied to the previous color to create the next highlight. The application is focused mostly on the ridges. Uh, so what they want us to do here is to mix the dark sand uh, with the uniform green and then do the edge highlight on the most uh, sharpest edges or on the straps or the stuff you will highlight uh, the most raised areas here just to create the final highlight. Uh, this went pretty smoothly and easy as well uh, because the details here are uh, very good and uh, it, there was not that many areas uh, to do. A mixture of 50% black and Luftwaffe camouflage green is applied to create the shadows and to better define the straps and the boots. Flat yellow is applied to paint LEDs and dark sand is added to highlight them afterwards. Ok, so this will be pretty easy just to finish off. So I mixed up uh, Luthafe camouflage uh, green with the black and create uh, a shadow color. So they want us here to go inside the recesses or inside the darker areas and just create a shadow with this paint. Uh, so it's a really small areas that you need to cover with this paint and it was uh, pretty easy. And then uh, I went uh, to use the flat yellow and paint the inside these three little LEDs, just create little dots inside. And as they advised uh, to use the dark sand as the final highlight on the LEDs, I just put uh, one little dot in the middle of one uh, of each of them. And that's it, that's uh, everything that they provided in this guide. So this is the final look uh, of this model. As we already experienced this in the previous videos when we painted the O12 and the Nomad uh, character, they don't provide you the guide to finish off the models like with the face. And this is the first time they didn't uh, showed us how to paint the weapon as well uh, but uh, I will just uh, do that uh, so you can continue watching the video and I will show you how to paint the gun uh, the base and the face and I will try to use the same colors that are provided here and try not to add that many colors to the mix so you can maybe buy one or two colors and you'll be able to paint the whole your army uh, with this paint set so let's start with the gun and the knife and just uh, paint them black. Uh, 
uh, I just uh, added a little water to the black color so it flows uh, better so it can go inside uh, the recesses between his fingers and I just uh, painted uh, the gloves, gun and the knife on his leg. Uh, for the face, I mixed the uh, dark sand with the sunny skin tone and I painted the face uh, but later I was not happy how this color looked like after it get dried because it looked like much brighter and pale so he looked like a zombie so I uh, repainted it later with the pure uh, sunny skin tone uh, so you can in this step just proceed with the pure uh, sunny skin tone if you want your skin to be a little warmer Uh, for the hair and the beard, uh, I used the flat earth and just painted uh, these parts of the model uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, just try to be neat and uh, be careful when you go around the ears and around the face. To finish off the eyes, I used the ivory, uh, which is like off-white color, and I just painted the sockets uh, of the eyes uh, white. Uh, to wash everything, I mixed the flat earth with the black, uh, just to create a nice wash, and then I washed the whole face eyes and the hair as well, so actually the whole head. While the head was drying, I mixed the dark sand with the black, like 50-50, uh, just to create uh, some uh, grey color. And I just went and highlighted his gloves and the gun. Uh, for the gun, I used the edge highlight, uh, trying to highlight uh, all the sharp uh, lines. While on the gloves, I put like a little dots uh, on his knuckles and uh, try to highlight the fingers where it was possible. Uh, to finish off the eyes, uh, I pick up black and I just uh, put two little black dots in the middle of the eye sockets. To be more stable while you're doing this, try to make some support under your hand and try to put both of your elbows uh, on the table so you are still and uh, just take a deep breath and put those dots. Uh, for the hair, uh, I mixed the flat earth uh, with the dark sand to create the highlight and since this model doesn't have a sculpted hair, I drew the hair myself so I just uh, used the tip of my brush and draw uh, a lot of uh, thin lines all around in the different uh, directions. Uh, for the red crescent sign that he have on the arm and the backpack, I used the, the flat red. And as well for the adrenaline shot that is on his uh, handgun. And to finish off the face, I mixed uh, the sunny skin tone with a little of dark sand just to create the, the final uh, warmer highlight and I just went and highlight uh, like a forehead, nose and cheeks to finish off uh, this model. last thing that we need to do today is to create the base. So I use this uh, Vallejo sand, desert sand, and I just spread it uh, evenly around the base with my modeling tool. And I was just tapping uh, at the top of the sand just to create, uh, to make it uh, stand a little upright. 
and then I left it outside to dry for a couple of hours. I think it took it like three or four hours to get uh, completely dried. Uh, after that, uh, I just washed the whole base uh, with the Seraphine Sephia. Uh, it was very thick wash, I was not uh, saving it. After everything was completely dried, I dry brushed the dark sand all over the base just to create the, the final highlight and actually the only highlight on that base. And now I will show you how I usually transfer my models and how I pin them to the base. So usually I make like a dry fit like where I plan to put the model and then I use my clippers and then I cut uh, these uh, pegs that he have down on his legs and I form uh, a little pegs that can I uh, insert inside the base. Then I measure where I want uh, the model to stand actually and on which spots I should drill the holes. Uh, so I will drill the holes uh, on the spots where these little pegs can go inside so I will super glue them inside so the model will stand there and uh, it will never break off uh, from the base. And a few last uh, pieces of, of decoration, uh, some desert uh, grass tufts. Uh, I have some old package, so I just pick up two and just uh, glue them somewhere between his legs just to create some diversity. And that's it. This model is finally completed. So what can I say about this guide, guys? Uh, so far, this was the most uh, difficult uh, guide uh, that I have to do. Uh, because it's a lot of sand and brown tones uh, with the different shades and you're mostly using like four colors and you're creating the shadows and the highlights by mixing those four colors so it was quite challenging and difficult for me uh, I don't know will I be able to paint the whole Haki Islam army like this uh, I think uh, it will take so much time and it will be too much uh, stress for me uh, but I like the end result the, the model at the end looks amazing and I'm, uh, I can recommend actually this set because you will have uh, all the colors uh, needed to paint your army uh, but maybe you will have to do little uh, shortcuts uh, here and there uh, just to make your job a little faster and that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and sorry that it was lasting this long and I hope you survived until watching it until the end, if you did, congratulations! And uh, please uh, leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, if you want to see me painting uh, the other uh, starter sets, please let me know and I will try to do my best and that's it for now. Stay safe, take care and see you in the next video.